It's 8.30. Oracle's gender pay gap lawsuit upgraded to a class action by a judge. Google Australia's cash for content talks break down. And Britain's streets were nearly flooded by cash from ATMs because of a crap 1970s code. From Backyard Tech, this is Tech News Today. 8.30 Tuesday morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Tech News Today. Three stories to get through, all from the register. Let's get into the first one. Oracle faces claims of unequal pay from 4,000 plus women after judge upgrades gender gap lawsuit to class action. IT giant accused of paying women less than men doing the exact same roles. A lawsuit filed against Oracle on behalf of six women seeking to be paid as much as their male colleagues has been certified as a class action, a legal milestone that will allow thousands of women a chance to have their gender discrimination claims heard. In 2017, Zian Murray, Sophie Wang and Rong Jewett, who had been employed by the American database giant as a project head, a principal application engineer and an application engineer, respectively sued the corporation claiming that it pays, that it pays women less than men for similar roles. Three other women, Marilyn Clark, Manjari Kant and Elizabeth Sue, Peterson subsequently joined as plaintiffs. They claim that they were paid an average of $13,000 less per year than male Oracle employees in similar positions. Earlier in 2017, the US Department of Labor sued Oracle for allegedly underpaying women and minorities. The DOL explained its lawsuit in January last year, arguing Oracle had deprived women and minorities of $400 million US in wages. In November, Oracle filed a counterclaim against the government insisting that Uncle Sam didn't have the authority to block contracts or challenge Oracle's payment practices. A recent study by Job Search Biz Hired found, quote, six times out of 10 women are offered less money than men to do exactly to do the exact same job at the exact same company close quote on thursday california superior court judge raymond swope of san mateo county superior court in redwood city issued an order certifying the plaintiff's proposed class action of 4100 women In his order, Judge Swope expressed scepticism of Oracle's claim that people with the same job code at the company do not perform similar work. Quote, first, Oracle's contentions do not appear to be consistent with Oracle's own documents and PMQ, or person most qualified. Testimony, close quote, the order says. It goes on to assert that the matter of law, Oracle cannot set individual pay within a job code base based on experience, education, and performance, if it does so inconsistently between men and women. And it concludes that there is enough statistical evidence and commonality amongst the discrimination claims that a jury can hear them as a group. Quote, We are heartened that Judge Swope certified the class as it will give all 4,100 women in a class in the class, a chance to assert their claims that they were paid less than their men in the same jobs, close quote, said James Finberg, an attorney at the San Francisco firm Altshuler Burson LLP, in a phone interview with a register, quote, and hopefully we will be able to get Oracle to change its approach going forward, close quote, good luck with that. Oracle? I doubt it. Unfortunately, what we've known of Oracle over the last few years is they are steadfast and won't change anything. The potential cost to Oracle could reach several hundred million dollars if a jury finds the uh, in the women's favour. Technology companies have been the subject of numerous claims over payment discriminations based on gender and race. 
but they're not often certified as class actions. Instead, they tend to be resolved individually without any public consequence for the company or change in pay practices. Google is fighting a pay discrimination lawsuit in California. Uber in 2018 paid $10 million to settle pay discrimination claims bought by 400 female and minority engineers. Concern about the issue of pay equity has prompted some companies like Adobe, Apple, Cisco, eBay and Intel to release data about their gender and pay and employee pay. Oracle, meanwhile, intends to continue arguing that it did nothing wrong. Quote, this is just procedural step unrelated to the merits of the case and we look forward to trying those in court, close quote, an Oracle spokesman said in an email to the register. Well, unfortunately, I think 4,000 women, it's nothing to be sneezed at, granted. That's a fairly decent, sizable lawsuit. Oracle will fight it tooth and nail, and as the article says, it'll probably get sorted outside of court, so it'll be an out-of-court settlement, and there'll be, you can guarantee it, a non-disclosure statement will be signed so that it doesn't make Oracle look bad. Google Australia says government pulled pin on content for cash talks. Hands in its homework anyway. And fires back with, we do for free what meat space distributors charge for argument. Google Australia's tentacles have hit back at Australia's plan to make web giant pay publishers for content shared on their network. In a Sunday roast, penned by Google Australia Managing Director and Veep Mel Siever, Sliver, Silver, sorry. The company said that it was on track to deliver everything asked of it in the, cons in the consultation process, quote, before the government changed the deadlines and shifted focus to a mandatory code, close quote. Quote, from the outset, Google, Google actively engaged in voluntary code process, Silver wrote. Continuing the quote, Google acted in good faith, working constructively by consulting with more than 25 news media businesses, broadcasters, and print and online publishers from metro and regional areas. We met with some publishers on multiple occasions to work through and understand the complex issues, close quote. Silver says Google Australia has sent th its thoughts to local regulators anyway and did so on the previously, previously agreed timeline. Silva didn't say what was in the submission, but her post makes the argument that publishers have, have always paid distributors for their content, yet Google performs the same service for free. Quote, Any, everyone benefits from this exchange, close quote, Silva writes. Quote, while news content has significant social value, it's often difficult to make money from, and primarily news-seeking queries make up only a tiny percentage of the queries we see. But by including news results next to other search results, we encourage users to click to view stories they may not have otherwise read, giving publishers the ability to show ads against those stories. Left unsaid is that Google could well place those ads and control the marketplace for those ads. Silver does not does point out that webmasters can keep their results out of search results, but she ignores Australia's call for transparency on the algorithms Google uses to decide which content reaches users' eyeballs. Silver seems to graze on the subject by saying, quote, our search results, including links to news stories, have always been determined by relevance, not by commercial considerations. Google does not accept payment to appear in organic search results, nor does it pay for sites to appear in search results, close quote. Now, that's called optimizer, SEO optimization. Well, SEO, that's called SEO. Australian regulators have not publicly responded to Google at the time of writing. Australia's government plans to have its pay-to-link scheme ready 
by July. I don't know. I don't know about that one. I'm going to have to sit on that one. I think I'll keep my mouth shut for the time being. Britain has no idea how close it came to ATMs flooding the streets with free money, thanks to some crap code, 1970s style. But rather, Purple Tester put paid to that infla uh, inflation-baiting bug. Who, me? Welcome to the start of another working week, and the tale... And, and a tale to take us back to the orange and brown hues of the 1970s, courtesy of the Register's Who's Me thread. Today's story flings us back 45 years. Skylab was still in orbit. Russia and the US were playing touchy-feely with their Apollo Soyuz test project. Bohemian Rhapsody was released. And cash dispensers, or ATMs, were cropping up around blightly. Our hero tale, our hero of the tale who the regular dramatic 9000 has elected to call Sam, had just graduated and was working for a firm responsible for the cash dispensers of well-known UK high street banks. Fresh faced and just out of college, quote, I was the sole programmer on the firm's oldest range of ATMs, close quote, he told us. We can just imagine those were the days long before bean counters had a bright idea of shoving Windows XP embedded or Windows 7 into holes in the wall. Back then, Sirius Iron was involved in such things. The IBM 2984 cash issuing terminal, for example, turned up at Lloyds Bank in 1972, as well as coining the term cash point can be seen very much as an ancestor of the ATMs today. Sam's ATMs were based on the Burroughs TC500, as ubiquitous back then, back in the day, as the PDP-11 would become a few years later. I've watched a doco on the Burroughs TC500 series, and it's very interesting. Quote, it was a strange little computer, close quote, he recalled. Quote, having no RAM stories, the programs were executed directly off the disk, which had a whopping eight kilobytes of memory. The computer also incorporated a golf ball typewriter for recording transactions. What do you reckon, the IBM Selectrix? Back in the, back in the 1970s, our hero was tasked with writing the dispense routine for an elderly kid, which he described as, quote, the exciting bit at the end of the process. After the customer had shoved in the appropriate card and, tap, and tapped in, in a pin, cash was supposed to pop out of the machine. The princely sum of £10, recalled Sam happily. As a reminder, £10 in 1975 works out to be about £85 in today's money. Back then, a first class stamp would set you back about 7p and you could expect to pay around 25p for a pint of beer. So uh, that crisp £10 was, something, was not something to be sniffed at. Writing in machine code, the software was loaded on eight hole-punched paper tape, as all proper software should be. All seemed to go well until field engineering came to test my masterpiece, recalled Sam, and it seemed overkill how complicated could the code be. Clearly not, not complicated enough. As 30 minutes into the test, a red-faced engineer spluttered, we've got a problem with your routine. If one of the sensors fail, the ruddy machine will empty the contents of the, of the safe onto the streets. We'd love to report we'd love to report that Sam error had made it into production and up and down the streets of Blightly, afflicted ATMs were spewing forth with broken tokens like confetti. Beer tokens like confetti. Alas, no. I went white as a sheet, he said, being quick thinking I could see how this might be an issue. Sam swiftly fixed the bug, and the test engineer lost his purple hue after passing the not-so-generous code. Being the 1970s, nothing was said on the matter. Now a web engineer and semi-retired, Sam says. Sam said of his 45-year-old faux pas, no one else was any the wiser. 
ever made a horrible, horrible coding error but managed to discreetly brush it under a handy rug or caused a tester to burst a blood vessel. We've done at least one of those two things. So that could be very ugly. Um, we know, I mean, just, just think about this for a minute. And this is why I picked this story today. I want you to think about this for a minute. Imagine today. Now, it, it can be a, 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 a embedded Microsoft ATM, okay, or an embedded Linux ATM, which there are some. Imagine the, the utter chaos in today's environment, okay, if that happened. If an ATM from a bank just started spewing currency. Now, here in Australia, it would be something like, you know, 20s and 50s, because that's all we can get out of ATMs. The US, the UK. Imagine an entire bank chain's ATM coming off the back end of a ATM server and it just starts spewing cash. Now, there is such a thing as free money, and that would be free money. And the bank probably would charge everyone who nicked a bit. But can you imagine the chaos today? Back then, it would have been chaos, but can you imagine the utter chaos if this was to occur right today? With today's technology, today's software, today's hardware, today's communications, the it would be under the most serious investigation and you would not be able to keep it quiet. It would be very, very, very difficult to keep it quiet. And that's why I picked this one because back then, yes, we had networks. Yes, we had modems. We had communications capabilities. But, you know, IBM and Burroughs and all that type of stuff. But if you were to take that and convert it into our environment, not not our current economic environment, but generally speaking, today's environment, and a bunch of ATMs just started spewing cash, I tell you what, it would be very hard for it to be kept under wraps because you'd probably find there'd be a public inquiry. There we go. Tech News Today for Tuesday the 5th of May. Stick around. Hopefully that 80 series video gets out today. If not, I'll catch you tonight for the convos. Enjoy your Tuesday, guys. Cheers.